Ever since my trip to Korea, I started to really think about what home meant to me. It's been six years since I was last in Korea, and it was my first time as a fully independent adult. When I was a sophomore in high school, my family decided to move to America. Not wanting to start a new life and wanting to finish school where I was, I decided to move into my grandparents' house in the outskirts of Seoul in a city called Songnam. Ever since I was a little kid, I would come visit my grandparents every month or so, so it wasn't too difficult of a transition. Because I attended school in Seoul, every morning at 7 a.m., I had to commute one hour back and forth. I am embarrassed to say that I had to rely on my grandmother to wake me up countless times. I have to admit that I had a lot of tardies, and I almost didn't graduate because of it. Because I did sports, I would attempt to go home at around 6 p.m. at night. But because I couldn't get a seat on the bus due to rush hour, I had to sleep over at a friend's place. I often thought that I needed to sweet talk my way with parents so they didn't feel as annoyed that someone was staying at their house so many times. Yeah, I was that guy that every parent loved. I remember being all over the place, spreading myself too thin, involving myself in multiple clubs. I remember being constantly self-conscious and highly anxious because I couldn't get the results I wanted. I remember being a huge people pleaser, still am, and giving my time to everyone that asked for help. Yes, I am the eldest sibling. Oh, how I was so young and naive. One of my favorite things about living in Songnam was the Tanchun River, which was conveniently located right next to our apartment complex. Whenever I was stressed or needed a change of pace, I remember going out to the river late at night to, just to go for a walk. The fresh air and the sound of the river soothed my mind and soul. Walking throughout my neighborhood, I started to reminisce about the past. Every street I walked, every location I visited, I was hit with nostalgia. Everywhere I went, everything just felt natural. Something that I never felt since I moved to the U.S. It was then that I realized this was my home. The place where I grew up and where I spent my youth. Naturally, I asked myself the question, would I want to come back and live here? I definitely struggled with this question until I remembered why I wanted to leave in the first place. Well, I did have to leave to go to college, but there was also another reason. I was sick of the societal expectations that I needed to hold. Asian societies are highly competitive and parents are willing to spend an exorbitant amount of money to get their child into the top universities. Kids would spend hours after school attending cram schools to get ahead coming back home at around 9 or 10 p.m. every night. I needed a new environment and a new life. I'm not saying that there aren't societal expectations in America, but I didn't feel as obligated to meet them in America as much as I did in Korea. Throughout my seven years in the U.S., I really was able to focus on myself, learn about myself, and grow as an individual, something that I don't think I would have been able to accomplish if I had lived in Korea. Korea will always be my hometown, and maybe I'll live there sometime in the future for a short term. But for the time being, I have things that I want to accomplish in the U.S., in New York City. Of course, I still miss Korea and my relatives. But I think I got enough pampering from my grandparents to not have to go for the next year or so. The trip to Korea showed me how far I've come and how much I've grown up. There's still so much that I want to do, and I'm excited to experience what lies ahead.